Historians believe about 300,000 people died during the Cambodian Civil War. However, they believe between one and three and a half million people perished in the four years that followed. Cambodia's history is filled with betrayal and tragedy. Its people have weathered monsoons and the corrupt politics of internal leaders and external powers. Before colonization, it was a strong country with hospitals and plenty of food. They even were home to the Khmer Empire, one of the greatest empires in the Indochinese Peninsula. That all changed when outside powers like France, the United States, and China began exploiting the country and using it for their own gain. Today, the country is still in turmoil, and some of its struggles center around the same problems that led to the Cambodian Civil War. This war left deep scars in Cambodia's history, so the conflict is crucial to understanding the country's current situation better and beginning work to help them overcome oppression and poverty. What led to the Cambodian Civil War? Cambodia was a French colony until 1953. They gained their freedom during the First Indochina War, and it was globally confirmed the following year at the Geneva Conference. In 1955, they had their first elections after gaining their independence. The People's Socialism Community, with its conservative stances, earned about 83% of the votes. The Democratic Party earned about 12%. The Krom Prachichan was the Communist Party's front, but they only received 4% of the votes. Pol Pot was part of the Krom Prachichan from the beginning. The People's Socialism Community most likely secured so many votes through dishonest election practices. Their leader was Noradam Sayanuk. His party silenced newspapers that didn't support him, removed boxes with Democratic ballots, and actively committed fraud in areas supporting the Krom Prachichan party. In this way, Sayanuk's party kept its power for 15 years. However, this did not silence the communist movement in Cambodia, mainly because the Vietnam War began in November 1955. Cambodia was officially neutral. However, the war impacted Cambodian politics and eventually spilled into the country. Communist forces continued to grow in eastern Cambodia. Politics became increasingly polarized, and Sayanuk's party, now called the Sankum, used the police to limit rivals during the 1958 elections. By the end of the 1960s, the Cambodian economy was struggling. Despite their neutrality, most of their rice crop had been sold to North Vietnam. Then, the rice and cotton crops faltered. The farmers' high interest increased dissatisfaction. So, in 1967, a revolt occurred in Battambang, causing the Sayanuk government to declare martial law, led by Prime Minister Lan Ngo. The harsh policies and lack of any real support for leftist ideologies only strengthened the leftist movement. During the 1960s, the communist groups continued to grow. The communist Khmer Rouge formed their own army. It was small but intensely nationalistic. Although they weren't interested in creating an alliance with North Vietnam, the United States entered Cambodia with troops and air bombing campaigns in 1969 and 1970. They claim they entered Cambodia to attack North Vietnam bases in the area. Sayanuk's government supported the United States with Lan Nol's Khmer National Armed Forces, although Sayanuk publicly criticized the bombings. Historians still are unsure if Cambodia had actually asked the United States for help. Some United States sources claim Sayanuk invited the United States to attack the communist bases in the country. Whether or not this is true, the attack had the opposite effect. Instead of purging the country of communist influences, the country became increasingly polarized and spurred the growth of the Khmer Rouge. Once the United States pulled out of Cambodia, Khmer National Armed Forces suddenly found themselves attacked by both the Khmer Rouge and the Viet Cong, both communist armies. The communist influence continued to grow, and in the late 1960s, Sayanuk learned China, which was also communist, was supporting the Cambodian Communist Party. Naturally, this upset him and he threatened to close the Chinese embassy. He only relented when the Chinese promised all future materials would first go to Cambodia's information ministry, which would theoretically limit the amount of Chinese propaganda in the country. However, this only shows how deeply the Communist Party had settled into Cambodia, and the tensions between Sayanuk's conservative government and the Cambodian Communist Party were about to erupt and change the course of the nation. What happened during the Cambodian Civil War? The Cambodian Civil War officially began in 1968 with the first Khmer Rouge attack, but the war started escalating in 1970 when Sayanuk traveled to Europe for medical treatment. 
he appointed Sisawath Sirik Matak as his deputy prime minister while Sayanik was gone. Sirik Matak privatized the banks and tried to close the Viet Cong bases in Cambodia. To his horror, Sayanuk had actually agreed to allow them to set up communist bases in Cambodia. It appeared Sayanuk's conservative stance was slipping in his attempts to hold the country together. Sayanuk had even agreed to ship weapons for the Viet Cong out of the port of Sayanukville in exchange for the Viet Cong purchasing Cambodian rice at inflated rates. His goal was to support Cambodia's economy, which was continuing to fall. Sirik Matak decided he had to act. Lan Nol also stepped back in. He closed the port and ordered the Viet Cong out of the country. Of course, they didn't leave, but that did not stop Lan Nol and Sirik Matak from staging a coup. Sirik Matak convinced Lan Nol to remove Sayanuk from power, and on March 18th, the Cambodian National Assembly voted in agreement, making Lan Nol the new acting prime minister. Rather than return to his country, Sayanuk searched for allies, landing in communist China. From Beijing, Sayanuk secured alliances with China and multiple other communist countries, firmly securing his switch to the communist movement. He established a government in exile called the Royal Government of the National Union of Kampuche. Back in Cambodia, Lan Nol established the Khmer Republic, and Sayanuk encouraged his supporters to fight against Lan Nol's government. Revolts broke out in several provinces. It was violently put down by the Cambodian army, which killed hundreds and arrested thousands of people. Although the United States initially supported Lan Nol's Khmer Republic, they were forced to pull back due to increasing protests at home. Their support became increasingly limited, and North Vietnam stepped in, taking over much of northern Cambodia. They gave the land to the Khmer Rouge, the Communist Party army in Cambodia. Meanwhile, the Khmer Republic recruited thousands of people to the Khmer National Armed Forces. However, most needed to be trained. There was also so much corruption that most of the supplies and food never reached the soldiers. Many genuinely fighting for the Khmer Republic never received the materials and rations they needed. The Cambodian Civil War had several operations. The Communist Party continued progressing, assisted by the People's Army of Vietnam. During Operation Chen La One, the Khmer Rouge, helped by the People's Army of Vietnam, attacked the Phnom Penh airport and destroyed the plane there. The United States replaced the plane, which had been old anyway, but the Communist victories continued. During Operation Chen La Two, the Khmer National Armed Forces wanted to clear the communication route to Kom Pong Thong one of Cambodia's largest cities. They managed to recapture the cities of Barai, Phnom Satuk, and Tang Khorasan from the communists, but they never entirely cleared the way to Kampong Thong. However, the People's Army of Vietnam soon pushed the national troops back again. The United States attempted to help the Khmer National Armed Forces by launching Operation Freedom Deal. Their goal was to remove communist supply lines, but their objective became increasingly broader as the operation progressed. America soon resumed the aerial bombings. They wanted to push the communist forces back. Sadly, many of their attacks hit civilian villages, killing thousands of innocents. In January 1973, the Vietnam War came to an end with the Paris Peace Accords. Part of the agreement stated all foreign troops had to leave Cambodia. Lan Nol still controlled the Khmer Republic, but his government was weak. The Khmer Rouge ruled most of Cambodia, and once the People's Army of Vietnam left, they became increasingly harsh. The Khmer Rouge banned religions and executed anyone who asked questions or disobeyed orders. Although they cut their connections with North Vietnam and Sihanouk, they continued pushing into the Khmer Republic. By 1975, the Khmer Republic was crumbling. Their capital, Phnom Penh, was heavily overcrowded with refugees. The Khmer Rouge soon took over the rivers, which was how the capital got its supplies. The United States continued to fly in supplies until April 1975, when the Khmer Rouge's success finally became inevitable. In Operation Eagle Pole, they evacuated all the Americans and some Cambodian high officials, although many refused to leave. They were upset the United States wasn't supporting the Khmer Republic anymore. The next day, the Khmer Rouge renewed their attack on Phnom Penh, taking the city a few days later. They executed the remaining leaders of the Khmer Republic and then told the people they all needed to evacuate to avoid an American bombing. The United States had no plans to bomb the city. The forced march appears to have been intended to eliminate the refugees and rifle through their belongings. About 200,000 people died on this march, 
and the Khmer Rouge was officially the winner of the Cambodian Civil War. What were the results of the Cambodian Civil War? The Khmer Rouge quickly set up its own government, but it was filled with oppression and human rights violations. After winning the Cambodian Civil War, the Khmer Rouge started the Democratic Kampuchee. Despite the name, democracy was a far cry from how the country truly operated. There was only one party, the Communist Party. Pol Pot was the Secretary General, and Norodom Sihanouk returned from China as the new head of state. In 1976, Sihanouk resigned, and Pol Pot became the Prime Minister. The Khmer Rouge's government was led by people who had studied Marxism and believed in their ethnic superiority. The government controlled the people's lives, even dictating where they lived and how they worked. They forced many people to live in agriculture communes. The work was harsh and overly demanding. Despite the expectations of high crop yields, famines were common. Cambodia also saw a decline in Western influences like medicine, religion, and education. The goal was to stop all outside influence and force the people to place the needs of the state above themselves or their families. Between 1975 and 1979, Cambodia also suffered under the Cambodian Genocide. Anyone connected to religion, education, or other countries came under attack. Refugee camps and Buddhist shrines were frequent targets. Executioners were even threatened if they didn't meet their weekly quotas. These four years were filled with atrocities that continue to shock the world today, and historians believe between one and three and a half million people died under the Khmer Rouge's government. However, the Khmer Rouge did not only have to worry about keeping the Cambodian people in line, but also about external opponents, like Vietnam. In 1979, Vietnam finally took Phnom Penh and started a new government. It was pro-Vietnam, but this did not end hostilities in Southeast Asia. Instead, it set off another war. Vietnam eventually withdrew from Cambodia, leaving the remaining people to attempt to pick up the pieces. It has been hard for the Cambodians to rebuild. They continued to struggle with poverty, human rights violations, oppression, and questions about the free market. The Cambodian Civil War left deep scars on the nation from which the people are still healing. Thankfully, the Cambodians have always been intent on surviving. With time and support, they will be able to overcome the Cambodian Civil War, taking lessons from it and building a stronger country for the future. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history? Impress your friends and predict the future more accurately based on past events. If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the Cambodian Civil War, check out our book, History of Cambodia, a captivating guide to Cambodian history, including events such as the rise and decline of the Khmer Empire, Siege of Angkor, Cambodian-Vietnamese War, and Cambodian Civil War. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.